while we are waiting for y'all to fall in, um, I will go ahead and introduce Robin Joe, who you can see on the screen here. So I am Skylar with Lean Frontiers, and I will be your host for today's webinar. We will not be fielding questions since we only have a small time frame for the presentation. However, this webinar is being recorded, so please allow us 24 to 48 hours for us to get a link out to you. Um, with that, I would like to introduce our facilitators for today, Joe and Rob Murley. Joe is the CEO and Rob is the COO of the Murley Group. The Murley Group is an organization dedicated to the teaching and coaching of the lean management system and the organizational change that enables them. With that, I will hand it over to you guys. Thank you very much, Skylar. So I'm Rob Murley. I have Joe Murley to the side of me here. Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're here to talk about uh, digitally enhanced visual management design. So we all know about visual management. Um, however, today, uh, we're going to focus on how you actually go about designing the visual management. Uh, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about us. Uh, we are the, we are, uh, the Murley Group, and um, we are spread across the globe. We have multiple coaches in multiple different countries. Uh, we've been around since 2002 um, and we've worked in a variety of industries, everything from healthcare to banking, to government, to insurance, to manufacturing and beyond. Um, a little bit about what we do. Um, our bread and butter is coaching, coaching and consulting. Uh, so we do a lot of, um, in-depth engagements with our clients where we take them through a uh, lean transformation. Uh, we also facilitate lean events such as enterprise mapping, Kaizen events, et cetera. And today the focus is our training and e-learning. So uh, since the pandemic started, we've really ramped up our digital presence and we've created an e-learning series um, the one that's coming up that we're here to talk to you today is on visual management. And uh, we also offer many others. So if you're interested, um, definitely check out our website, see what we've done, what we have coming up. We'd, we'd love to have you in class. Um, so the foundation of all of our teachings uh, is the lean management system. And it's made up of the, uh, the elements that you see here. So we have True North, that is the, uh, the guiding principle, the constancy of purpose of an organization that aligns everybody everywhere at every level uh, to solve problems in a unified manner. Uh, we have standard work. We have visual management, which we're gonna talk about today. We have people systems. So that talks about um, you know, the HR side of things, the people side of lean. Um, so what are the competencies that we hire for? Uh, how do we develop career paths? How do we engage everybody in this problem solving machine that we're building? Uh, leader standard work and behaviors. That is uh, leadership's role in engaging the people to sustain everything. Um, and then we have accountability. So the lean management system covers not only the continuous improvement of an organization, but as well as the sustainability. That's why we look at this as a uh, holistic thing. So visual management is what we're here to focus on today. Uh, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about visual management? Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for the intro, Rob and, and Skylar. Um, really, the, the point of this class and the, and the thing that we really want to get across is embodied in this image. Uh, one of the problems, along with one of the blessings of visual management, is that you see it, it's intuitive, and it strikes you when you see a good visual management tool. Um, the problem becomes one of shiny object syndrome. So what we have seen through the years, as people start to wrap their arms around how to make a workspace visual, whether it's an office, a clinic, or a factory, it doesn't really matter. Typically, part of the learning journey is to go visit other organizations that are doing similar things to what you are. And the lean community has been very open-armed about that. Come on in, let's, you know, let's share best practices. Let's share what we've learned. What ends up happening is certain visual tools strike you. You bring them back to the workplace and you hang it up. You, know, you put it in, into the workplace. 
and uh, hopefully people will adopt it. Uh, but what we found in practice is just as often as not, uh, this visual tool gets put up. Some people uh, take to it, some people use it, some people don't use it, and it's sort of a haphazard approach. And then somebody else goes on another tour and they see a visual tool and they repeat the process. They bring it back into the workplace. And over a relatively short period of time, when you're walking the Gemba, the place where the work takes place, where the truth lies, you start to see this sort of billboard effect of all these different visual tools that don't necessarily tie together and tell the story. And that's the, the backbone of this course, uh, whether it's digital or whether it's physical, when I'm walking through the Gemba, can I walk away with a clear understanding of A, what should be happening and B, what's actually happening and then marry that up with the lean leadership behaviors to coach people to do problem solving within that gap between what should be happening, what's actually happening. So how do we do that? How do we structure an approach to designing visual tools? Like many things in lean, we like to start with a value stream map and uh, taking a thoughtful approach to applying visual management starts at this point. When we start to study how both information and uh, the product flow through the organization, uh, the value stream mapping tells us where inventory has the opportunity to accumulate, right? So the definition of a process step in a value stream map, which is very different than a flow chart, by the way, is those boxes at the bottom represent points in the value stream where flow stops and or inventory can accumulate. Well, when you have this cross-functional team together, looking at the value stream map, you can start to, to interrogate that map deeply and think about not just how will material and information flow, but how will we manage this? And by managing it, we don't just mean managers, but also the people doing the work. How will they manage that flow? Well, I think as you can, as, as you can, as, as you can surmise for yourself, if you're working with a FIFO lane, first in, first out, it becomes pretty simple to manage because I'm just picking up the next thing coming down the line and working on it and then putting it down and maybe putting it into another FIFO lane. So other than the fact that we're trying to manage it as one piece flow, not a whole lot of additional visual management around that is required. But where inventory can pile up, those create information hotspots. And that's what these triangles represent. So we start to interrogate the value stream and say, well, okay, at this generation of value stream mapping, we feel like these are the areas where things are most likely to show a gap between what should be happening, what's actually happening. And we wanna think deeply about how can we create not just standard work and leader standard work, but a visual environment that makes it very clear when something abnormal is happening there, as opposed to, again, just sticking up shiny objects all over the value stream uh, because you have an affinity for it, because you are attracted to it. So from that evolves something that we call the pulse point arrow. So essentially, this is a straightened out version of the value stream map. So if we think about a value stream map, it's following the flow of product along the bottom from left to right. But we don't always manage our value streams in that manner. So for example, if you're in a manufacturing business, very often shipping and receiving are in the same physical area of the factory. So you wouldn't start with receiving, walk all the way through the factory and then come back to shipping uh, for a second walk through of the same area. Typically you might, but typically you wouldn't. So when we're thinking about the pulse point arrow, both shipping and receiving would be one pulse point in this arrow because it's one physical stop along my Gemba walk. So the first step is, how am I managing this value stream? Where will I stop? And once I've determined where I will stop, before I go to that shiny object, I start to work with my team and think about what questions do we need to answer at each of these pulse points? And then, and only then, go to the bottom of the arrow, we start thinking about how can we visually articulate the answers to those questions that are at the top? So now we've taken the team through an analysis of the value stream. We then talked about how we do a, a gimbal walk through the value stream. 
where are we going to stop? Where are the hot spots versus where there's one piece flow and maybe it's a fairly quick walkthrough in that area. And when I stop at that hot spot, specifically, what's the minimum amount of information I need to know to determine whether or not the value stream is performing normally or abnormally at that point? Then and only then we start to look at the options in terms of what will that visual tool look like? What will the media be? And we'll talk later about that. In some cases, it should be digital uh, because of the nature of the value stream. Uh, but we also don't want to overuse digital tools because sometimes they can be off-putting for those that are actually working within the, the value stream. Uh, but in other cases, it's appropriate. So we need to make good decisions on is it a physical, environmental, or a digital media, and what will it look like when we actually put it into place? So the environmental uh, answer is the simplest of them all. So you'll see a shadow board here for tools. This is the classic or iconic example of a visual tool. And um, you know, I think nobody needs a lot of instruction to know that if there's a hook there, and as a silhouette of a drill, and I hang the drill up on that hook and it matches a silhouette, it's in the right place. If it doesn't match a silhouette or it's not hanging there, then it's not in the right place, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Um, a physical visual tool uh, should be tactile. In other words, I wanna interact with it if I possibly can. And by the way, when we get to digital, we have to talk about this as well because one of the problems if we get to digital is that people's interaction with the visual tool tends to go down. So when we're creating physical visual tools, we really want those doing the work to interact with it directly so they deeply understand that information and they actually use that tool. Um, in some cases, people want to avoid taking people off of their jobs, even for a couple of seconds to update a visual tool. And generally speaking, we would, we would advise against that because those doing the work are gonna be the primary people that are identifying and starting the process of solving a problem, even if they're teeing it up for somebody else to go more deeply into it. There so, is some magic in interacting with the tool, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah and that, that, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, very often we see people create really highly automated work centers where those doing the work never have to look up. They never have to interact with that tool uh, other than a screen that's demonstrating some numbers up there. And um, it, it doesn't have the impact you want it to have when that team comes together for their daily huddle meetings. They don't really deeply understand all the abnormalities that took place in the prior shift. Mm. So you want people to come to that meeting being those that are closest to the impact, those that are closest to that information and saying, yeah, you know, in the middle of the day, this happened and here's what I observed when that happened. And uh, here's what should have been happening. This is what's actually happening and starting the process of problem solving, right? Which is key uh, to the first principles of Lean. So tactical, tactile rather, easily understood and user accessible. So on the right here, you'll see, uh, this is an environmental organization, it actually happens to be the, um, environmental organization responsible for the state of Arizona, tracking underground storage tanks and leaking underground storage tanks. And they're showing the entire universe of underground storage tanks in the state and what their status is. And each week those numbers are updated and they made it very simple where the, the scientists that are tracking these things can simply write the number on a post-it note and stick it up there and they can see whether or not things are moving in the right direction and they, and they can talk with one another. Uh, without a whole lot of updating happening during that meeting, but digging right down into it. Then there's the digital answer. Uh, we live in a dispersed world. Uh, COVID has only accel accelerated that. You know, a lot of us are working from home still, and I'm hearing more and more that many companies are saying, you know, we're, we're not going to have you come back into the office um, after COVID is, is back under control. Uh, because we find that this had several advantages, or in some cases, organizations that are going to use hoteling options, you know, where people can come in one or two days a week or on special needs, they come in and um, meet at that time. So creating something digital for that environment is necessary, but please keep your eyes open to the fact that you have to be 
extra careful of keeping people deeply engaged in a digital environment because it becomes very easy for them to sort of hang back and not interact with that information. So if you're going to use a digital means, the use of touch screens is important and making sure that everybody in that meeting, the person facilitating the meeting is encouraging people to touch the screen and move the data around and speak to it as they're doing so, just like they would with a physical uh, visual tool as well. Um, you know, we, there's several brands out there that provide these features. We work pretty closely with a company called IOBEA, but this is not an advertisement for that company. Uh, but those characteristics that we look for is that it's very flexible. So that the system isn't telling you what the visual tool should look like. You're telling the system what speaks visually to your organization and that it's tactile so people can, un can interact with it with their minds, with their voices, and with their hands as they're meeting as a team, even if it's virtually. Uh, it's an important piece of it. Um, yeah. So in order to create a visual system that's actually useful, we wanna make sure that we're putting the right visual tool in the right place in the right medium. So you know, again, avoiding that big shiny object syndrome, uh, but let's also think about the categories of visual tools. There's visual process adherence tools, which basically say, here's the way we should be doing this job. And by using this tool, I can tell whether or not it's being done the way it should be, not telling you how well it's performing, but just what the standard work is, what the current standard work is, and whether or not it's being adhered to. So the simplest version of that is a shadow board. In this particular case, it's a cube and it becomes very obvious you know, where things belong. So that's a visual process adherence tool. On the right side is visual process performance. So visual process performance tools tell us basically how is the process performing? So if I have done my Gemba walk, and by the way, I always recommend that you start with the Gemba walk first and then look at the visual process performance board because it becomes well too easy to skim by the board and if things look good, keep walking. But that interaction with the workplace is key to lean leadership. So we look at the visual process adherence tools. We then go to the visual process performance boards and we recommend that things get measured in five basic categories typically. They always get modified slightly for specific cases, but generally speaking, it's people, quality, delivery, cost, and the rate of continuous improvement. So people speaks to how well are we doing as an organization in developing the problem solving capability of our people and engaging their hearts and minds and bodies into it. Uh, quality is the process being adhered to. And if it's being adhered to, is it giving us the result in terms of quality? Does it meet the customer's expectations of quality um, that, that we have to adhere to? Delivery. Are we getting it to the customer? Are we getting everything to the customer that they've asked for at the time and in the manner in which they need it, delivered to them in the manner in which they need it? And then finally, cost. And when we think about cost, we want to be careful that we're not going right to the financial accounting principles that may be a bit abstract for the shop floor or the office floor or the exam room if it's a, uh, if it's a healthcare environment. But we want to think about are we producing more value for the resources that we're consuming? So if it takes so many labor hours to do something today, is it better or worse than it was yesterday? Are we continuously improving? And when we think about metrics, we always wanna think about a few fundamentals on one visual tool for each of these measurements. The baseline, you know, how did we perform last year? current monthly performance so we can see the trend through the year. Again, lean is about continuous improvement. So just uh, maintaining a standard is not good enough in lean, right? We're always trying to improve. And then current daily performance, where if we see a dip that happened yesterday, <clears throat> we can get the team to focus on that and think about what potential countermeasures might, might help solve that problem that occurred yesterday. So. And the course, the, the deeper course, we're gonna show typical examples of that and how to design those in some detail. And then finally, lead a standard work, that if you are not engaging in the gimbal walks and reflection meetings and responding to andons, these things will fade. People will stop putting tools back up on the shadow board. 
uh, the metrics will become either fall into disuse or will become a show that nobody's actually using. We've seen that happen before where people are, you know, they have full-time jobs just keeping up the visual metrics and nobody's actually looking at them. That can do some direct problem solving. Uh, so the leader standard work, gimbal walks, reflection meetings, and on responses, and one-on-one -on -one development. You know, those four tools uh, and how they interact with these visual tools is really, really critical. And um, we'll talk in more depth about that if you sign up for the course. So you could say without the extremely consistent communication and behavior of leadership, that's really only achievable through leadership standard work. Uh, visual process adherence utilization uh, won't be sustainable, right? You can't no. just expect uh, utilization of our VPA tools without leadership getting involved and creating that culture of adherence yeah, and utilization. No, no, that, that's a good point, Rob. Um, you know, there's a, there's a physics principle of entropy that things will degenerate over time. And um, we, we have seen this consistently through the years and across industries. And um, if you just leave things to their own devices and leadership isn't actively engaged with these tools, they will fall into disuse or they will be misused. And um, pretty soon they start to become monuments to something that we tried and didn't work, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a negative commentary on, on the lean effort in general. Right? That's yeah. not where you want to be. In order for that to work, the leader needs to go to where the work is happening. So they need to get out there and observe these tools in use, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so if I were to sum this up, uh, the VSM shows the flow of value to the customer. You know, that's a way to map out the flow of value to the customer and really understand the potential problem areas that need to be managed. So anywhere that inventory accumulates and or flow stops, right? Mm -hmm. um, once we have that data, we can allow it to speak to us and we can figure out, okay, where are the management hotspots? And from there, we can start to build that pulse point arrow. So the pulse point arrow uh, will really show us uh, the most likely questions that need to be answered visually. And we can start to strategize on how to answer those questions. And it also shows a logical gimbal walk sequence based on how that flow of value is happening. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point, Rob. Yeah. Like, that's a good summation. So we hope to see you in our class. Um, it is June 8th and 9th, it's two days. Uh, it goes noon to four o'clock Eastern. Uh, so it's a four hour class, two days in a row. Um, we like to, uh, you know, not only provide you with good information, but also give you plenty of breaks throughout the class so you're able to get up and stretch your legs. You know, we know that um, doing things remotely over a digital platform such as Zoom could be uh, a little different than in person. So, you know, we, we really want to give you the flexibility to uh, take pauses throughout the class. And if you would like to sign up, you can just hit our website. So the group.com has a list of all of our e-learning classes. You can see what's coming up. You can see this upcoming one on digitally enhanced visual management. Uh, it's easy to sign up. Um, and if you would like a preview of the materials, feel free to email me, um, rob.murley at the uh, I'd be happy to send you some stuff and answer any questions you might have. So before we sign off, uh, we do have uh, a quick question. Um, do you have any examples of how this has been used successfully in hospitals on patient care units? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've done a ton of work in healthcare, and actually the healthcare That's, industry is, this has is embraced. Healthcare. Yeah, this, this <laughs> is a pulse point arrow of a healthcare environment. Unfortunately, time doesn't allow us to dig in here in any sort of depth, but we're happy to take this conversation offline. And obviously, uh, during the course, we can go deeply into what these tools look like and, yep. and uh, how that might apply. Feel free to reach out via email. We'd be happy to continue the conversation. Uh, we hope to see you in the class. Yeah. Um, we're available. We're here to be your lean ally. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, Rob, it's a shame that uh, we didn't have more time for Q&A during this class. But if people want to ask a question, 
can they email you? Absolutely. Uh, Rob.Murley at the Murley group.com. We'd be happy to dive into any questions yeah. you might have. Um, thank you very much for uh, coming today. All right. Thanks everybody. It's great to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Rob and Joe, for facilitating our webinar today. Like they said, if you guys do have any questions, please reach out to them. Um, we will also have this for you, this recording um, within 24 to 48 hours. So if you do have any more questions, when I send out the recording, you can forward them to me and I can forward them on to Rob and Joe. Thank you again, guys. And thank you to everyone who participated in today's webinar. We'll see you next thank time. You. Take care now. Bye. Bye.